I, um, I've had one attempt at Mintel. So five years ago. So this was in this was in Winter Valley. Gavin was here. We had a visit for a group of Welsh farmers. They had an animal business group there in Wales. Um, and I did a third of my wheat, uh, wheat a third of my oil seed rape, and a third of my winter barley uh, with Mentel. But this was the Mentel park, uh, 55 acre in this park. I chopped the uh, straw in the, in the Enrix to see how, it, how the system would cope with, with chopped straw. Um, and then obviously we compared it with the other parks that were just, just a standard plough uh, press and, and um, or, or standard cultivation. And the difference between the two crops was unbelievable. I mean, that came about time of year. Was, was it May or something? It was maybe later. No, it must have been later than that because it, was later. it wasn't as late as this. But, no. but the first thing we noticed when we came into the park was sterile brome. Yeah. We don't have sterile brome. Where the hell it come from? Every every acre I hand rogue. So I hand rogue everything. We don't have sterile brome. Where the hell that brome came from, I've no idea. But it wasn't just in batches, it was just no, bloody everywhere. It was just borderline being over. But we did. Me and the girls spent three days roguing it. Um, and we roguing it all. Um, but the area where the, where the chopped straw was, um, could have been a bit of food shortener um, than this. And then when you went across the park into the ploughed, it was just, just chalk and cheese. Uh, but, we kind of, the type of soil that we have, we kind of seem to get rid of water. Now I know you would say that's probably down to the fact that the soil profile, the, you know, the soil structure's near right or whatever, but it's just because we're over a clay subsoil. Unless we get a really dry summer and, and everything starts cracking, I mean, it's just starting to crack now. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I'm, you know, that's one of the things I'm scared of, that with the whole new government support scheme, is that the plough is going to be demonised and uh, we're going to be forced down the Mintel route and if that's the case you're speaking about my vision for the future if I'm told I can only Mintel then And so, you know, where, where are we going to find this happy medium of, you know, of trying to get I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with me I think there's, there's options and that's what we're trying to do in our rotation is put it into parts of the rotation where it works but the plough will never leave I think the answer is use crop yield as a barometer of soil condition. You know, and if you're consistently delivering yields, whether it's through a, a non-inversion system, min till system, or, or a conventional plough-based system, I think when it comes to carbon emissions and things like that, it should always be looked at per unit of production rather than on an area-based system. But it's not, is it? No, no. Well, and, and that's where, you know, we were just saying as we were walking along the track earlier, if an airline industry can claim to be carbon neutral, you know, we're rabbits in the headlights in agriculture that can't do the job better and sell our environmental credentials. We're, we're producing something that sequestrates carbon, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. well, well, we've got to produce this somewhere. So we're not as well producing it on the good land like this as efficiently as you can and getting really good production and sacrifice bits that are... And back to what Hugh was saying last couple of weeks. Sustainable weeks, intensification. Yeah, you know, the, land use. Kind of concentrate land the production use. on the better bits. But I mean, I, you know, I'll always be, I mean, I said the um, Yield Enhancement Network was like a, like a beacon of manna from heaven for me. Um, and I've learned a fair bit now that I've been changed. Uh, the health tissue analysis thing, I think, is really valuable. But, and that's well, do you not think the tissue analysis, about the whole story about you do it today and you do it tomorrow, you do it this morning, do it that? That's a threat. We, we have an issue um, with copper. Now, the nearer you get the hill, the worse it gets. I mean, I, I worked off the back, you know, the pigs that we had for for, for 20 years or whatever was, was putting on copper, and I thought, ah, I can't do the job. And if it had been soil uh, tissue and all uh, testing 10 years ago, I think it would have found it wasn't. We're now banging on. I used, I used to look at the, the heads and think, why the hell's are big blades there? There wasn't many, but there was some, and it's maybe just enough just to take that the last 5%, last 10% of the yield, just to get that last wee bit of. But again, it comes back to the and inputs, and I think the whole grain analysis thing as well, that's it, on the go. 
again shows you how there's a few anomalies. The tissue analysis always seems to show up boron is an issue. The boron's the an issue in cereal crops. Because I, I don't know if the model's right for boron. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, what we're finding is we're doing more and more analysis uh, and, uh, and there's more and more live Just for boron, is it? No, no, I'm no. speaking across the board. Yeah, yeah, and I th and I think there's a relearning. So that there's actually a there's a uh, an enhanced learning required from the, the, the researchers to get into the detail that the technology and sensors now allow us to dig into. But, but I also think that I mean, I'm fairly neutral on mental or plough uh, up here. But for me, it's about making a system that matches your ability and suits your farm and just doing it really well. And it's about targeting inputs. So targeting inputs is not just about targeting fertiliser and pesticides and seed. It's about targeting your ability. <laughs> It's absolutely yeah. impossible, oh, no. but for, for a business manager you really have to think very Leslie's fault. Well, <laughs> but I think that the I support both. You, but you follow the you follow the same. It's going to be a, about overall emissions, and our big thing is actually nitrogen. It's not so much about CO two, and that's where the target's going to be. And we hope we're not. But if we're an NBZ, you're kind of a cap within reason already. But it might be more just actually use efficiency and all these kind of things. And whether you know, those inhibitors are more more liquid that's easily taken up rather than you know, like sitting fizzing on the ground in a dry spring. These kind of things. So that's where. That's another thing with Gavin says, science are, are, that was looked at 30 years and it needs to be complete, especially with nitrogen, they can't go make the rules on something they came up with 30 years ago. It needs to be it was completely, incorrect then. It was incorrect then. Yeah. It needs to be completely revisited.